Warning, the following content may contain spoilers for film and television programs. It is also intended for mature audiences. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. Ahoy, all of you Flick Freaks out there, what is going on? My name is Andrew, and we are here with the Flick Freak Podcast. Jareth, what episode is this? The sextieth episode. It is the sextieth episode. That is the voice of the wrong half of Hollywood, Jareth Mooneyham. Joined, as always, by... Also, we have the king of the doldrums, Brian Vaughn. Hi. And the radish ravenator, Michael Boykin. There's a grizzly bear in the nativity scene. <laughs> Oh Look no! Out, Mom. That's actually really Get accurate. Baby Jesus out of there! And fuck it, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Mike, I need to apologize to you. This just dawned on me. What we've known each other for a, a fair amount of time now. Yeah, I've never asked you if you if you prefer Michael or Mike. I don't. Care. You don't. Okay. No. So I don't about know why Nathan? it's taking me this long to ask you. So don't fucking call me Nathan. Bert. No. Alexander Ogilby. I like Ogilvy. Do you have a different Alabaster. name you would prefer besides Michael? Like, like man, that could that should have been my name. <laughs> um, like no. Tyrone or <laughs> Tyrone? No, definitely Tyrone. Scooter Pimp. <laughs> Scooter Pimp. I yeah, you know what? The best thing I could hope for is just to ask, like, to just kind of pull the string on Jarrett's back and see what comes out. Yeah, Scooter Pimp. Wampin' Scott. <laughs> That's a real name. That sounds like Mike that's Wamp- just as real as your name. That sounds I mean, like we're being somebody fair. like an old English, like archaic family I'm name Andrew like this. Andrew Wampen Scott. Yes, Andrew <laughs> Wampen Scott. I have horses. I, my Inheritor family's owned Wamp this land for seventeen space. generations. <laughs> I play both polo and water polo. <laughs> I invented the three-headed dildo. <laughs> I, I kind of started hit a little div- too close to home. I started Jareth is the actual a little inventor. bit into Bane there slash Deck. Yeah. Oh, no Batman! <laughs> Stay a while, Batman. Listen. I'm hungry. We'll talk about Batman later wow. on. But before we do that, <laughs> Brian, yeah, did you see that opinion of the week? <clears throat> I have one. Yes, go ahead. I am going to be as is Andrew, I believe, because he has watched all of it. What a build up this is. Uh oh. Discussing uh, the Netflix television series Jessica Jones. If it's any of you have heard of that, pronounced you have. Jessica Hones. <laughs> I don't. I don't believe that it is. It should um, be. After doing some research, uh, I have found that Jareth is not correct about that. Jessica Hones. So I have no background knowledge of Jessica Hones. Uh, Thank you. No problem. I do not know her place in the Marvel comics or whatever. She is and a I, C-list <laughs> hero yeah. for heroin. So I don't know anything about they that. They prefer to be called heroes now, too. Not heroin. Or little people. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know anything about Animated that. Animated American. Jesus Christ, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'll shut up. This is a professional podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Never have. <laughs> we always keep things on the up and up and follow a strict, rigid guideline. Yes. Wait. You're... Anyway, Jessica Jones. Is that what we're doing? Okay. <laughs> Jessica Jones. So, <laughs> so uh, I don't know anything about the background of Jessica Jones. So uh, I she's actually super strong. That's it. She's really strong. Yeah. Uh, she's a private investigator. Yeah. Um. Actually, throughout the show, I found myself googling characters. Mm-hmm. To see if they were supposed to be something I was supposed to recognize. Due to oh, my, like my complete... Oh, they're going to turn into yeah, yeah. Spider Man. No, but yeah, you know, yeah. Luke Cage is yeah, Luke yeah. Cage and yeah. and uh, Simpson. Yeah, Simpson. yeah. I don't know Simpson. I know Luke Cage from. Before. He's apparently someone called Nuke. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't really get his character all that well. Yeah. So, the premise of the show, for those of you who don't know, is that Jessica Jones is super strong and a private investigator, as we said. Yes. And uh, very early on, she takes a case, which seems pretty routine, that ends up uh, bringing back into the fold Kilgrave, who the, is the kind of man. her... her the, yeah, apparently. Yeah. One uh, of like, the <laughs> baddest dudes like ever. Yeah. 
who is played by David Tennant, who does a fantastic God, job. God, he's so fucking he's good. He's an amazing person. Yeah. So, anyway, it's just kind of a cat and mouse game. There's a lot that goes on. Um, I liked it a lot, and I am not the target audience here whatsoever. You don't like superheroes. I do not. I thought it was an excellent first season. I thought the, all of the main characters had plenty of depth. Uh the acting is very solid, with the exception of a couple of people. But in, in the main roles, it's. I want to know good. who you didn't like as an actor because I can't. Think um, of the guy that plays Simpson. Uh, yeah, he that's was... really my only complaint. Yeah, he he seemed weak to me in general. Uh, yeah. Just even in the writing capacity. Well, yeah. I especially liked uh, Carrie Ann Moss. Yeah, she was she was solid. Yeah, the lawyer chick. Oh yeah, yeah. she was great. But. Pr- pretty much, uh, Kristen Ritter blew this out of the water. Yeah, her and her Jones. and David Tennant are so good. Yeah, and then and there are plenty of uh, that's the central yeah. thing we're dealing with here. It they also a, do a good job of holding off on on Kilgrave too. It's a yeah. couple, a few episodes. Yeah, I think like before episode really three before three, you even see his face. You even see him. Yeah, yeah. Well, you see the back of his head at the end. One of time. Two. Yeah. So it, I found it extremely interesting. It's also really the first. One of these, like, Marvel productions that we've seen that is ex- has a, a female main character. Like, the yeah. lead of the show or movie is female. Yeah. I thought that was awesome. Uh, Jessica Jones herself has plenty of depth. There's a really cool noir feel, I thought. Um, you know, she has a shitty little apartment. Uh, she drinks all the time. It's nighttime all the time. <laughs> I, I feel like it changes <clears throat> I like tone that. a lot, but yeah, it. Oh does well, go- yeah, a little bit. I mean, there's a little bit of that. Yeah, um, Here's which a question I really for enjoyed. You. Did it ever feel like a superhero show to you? No, that's why I liked it. <laughs> Not once did it feel like never, I was watching a superhero never. show. Never. In fact, the powers thing, you know, different characters yeah. having powers because this is the Marvel universe. I hate that phrase. Um, it didn't. It was like a secondary thing. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, people had them. You just kind of accept that some people do. Yeah. It wasn't... No one was wearing a uh, really fucking stupid costume or anything. No. Yeah, no. yeah I, think, I think what I can say is that um, I really enjoyed Daredevil... Like, yeah, Daredevil's right, really good. Right as well. up until the part where he had a costume. So the yeah, Darian, the last episode. Yeah. Like yeah. until I was actually kind of upset because I liked his like yeah sweater with like the bandana over his eye. Yeah, I liked that too. That is it so was fucking. That's yeah, such a badass look. I loved Daredevil until it became a superhero show. And the like, last as episode. soon as it kind of came to fruition in that, I was like, I don't know. And also, like, one thing that's funny, uh, that Daredevil had no choice on, uh, the show is so good, and then he has to realize that he is a superhero at this point, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he has this terrible costume, and he has to call himself Daredevil, which makes no fucking <laughs> sense, based on the season of TV you just watched. Yeah. But that's the character's name, so you have to do it. Like, yeah, he has to. But between the um, Jessica Jones and Daredevil, I mean, this is a an excellent showing on Netflix. This is the CD underbelly of the Marvel Universe. Yeah, and it's way more fun to watch. Into. Let's yeah. just talk about how fucking dark... An ominous the show is. Dark. Yeah, really dark. Like there, there are, were moments of genuine just despair. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's it is not a fr- a lot of it surprised me quite yeah. a bit because I expected a very PG thirteen experience. Nope, this was horror. It is HBO absolutely show. not. Yeah, um, the language is whatever it wants to be. Yeah, the violence also is. Um, Weirdly, though, for all of the sex that's in it, there's very oh, little yeah. nudity. Yeah, yeah. Too everybody's too high profile. Like every <laughs> like they show like a lot of sex. Yeah, yeah. There but, was a lot of sex, but and like, I wanted spend, to, like five I, minutes on like these two people are fucking. Yeah, I wanted a little bit of nudity in there. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the only thing we didn't get. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you see some side boob once. <laughs> it's like really solid side. Jareth has actually tracked this and has oh, a, yeah. his has a note time episode marks. nine. <laughs> 53 minutes in, sad boob. Um, I, I just think it's kind of weird that they um, they spend a lot of time on the sex, especially in the first yeah. couple of episodes. And then there, there's no... There's nothing... Like, there's no real thing for the viewer besides like, okay, I guess these two people are doing stuff. It's like trying to be titillating, but it's hard to do that if I think it's just actually... Watch two superheroes have 
extremely angry violence. I think that sex. was kind of the point. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's how I took it. Is but they just do it like of... four times. <laughs> yeah. And you're like there for a... It's like, they're, they're they're trying to break, it's like they're trying to break each other. They're good looking people, Jareth. Let them fuck. Then let me look at them while they're doing it. <laughs> You're also, paying nine dollars a month to watch. We're, look we're at not. Have sex, so. We're not going to talk about the ending. Obviously, Jared's yeah. not there. Mike hasn't watched it. Yeah. But I, I was a little surprised it did not end with Kristen Ritter choking on her own vomit while Walter White <laughs> stood over her. <laughs> yeah, uh, like that. That's the same character. She yeah. just like moves to New Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. She dropped the apology girl gimmick and uh, was then Jessica Jones. Can I? But, can I bring up like a, a thing that I found weird about the show? What did it? So Jessica Jones repeatedly is like, "Well, I can jump soup, like I can fly by jumping." Yeah. yeah. Um, but her only superpower is super strength, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pressure on the ground. You know, you're 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 pushing down before you jump. Yeah. But running and jumping are essentially the same basic mechanic. Sure. I'm trying to follow you. Yeah. So she's, she's also very, very fast. She she's references but, being able to run like a three minute mile. Yeah, she point. does. But yeah. she gets outrun like four or five times in the show. Yeah. See, this is the shit Jared like, always does that I don't care about. <laughs> by like injured people. They're like, oh, yeah. fuck, I'm hurt and I can't run very fast. Yeah, but she's constantly injured as well. And that's the thing. She's super strong, but she's not. And she, she can get oh, yeah. really hurt as much and as she anyone does. A yeah, lot. a lot. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I I don't know. I really I thought it was I thought it was great. I thought it was I liked it more than I liked Daredevil, and I liked Daredevil a lot. Yeah. Cool. I'm right there with you. I think this may be yeah. the best thing Marvel has done. Just it, that's that's where I stand on it. But I mean, I know I'm again. Yeah. Uh, not as into it. That is until the new Captain America. And comes really, out. uh, to anybody out there who's going to watch it now because of these sterling, uh, yeah, reviews, uh, just make sure you're ready for some really dark shit. Yeah. It's this yeah, is not, not family friendly. No, not at all. I just, uh, I don't remember when it happened, when I realized, yeah, I do. I remembered, uh, well, like, I realized very quickly that this was not going to be like what I thought it was going to be like. Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be in the direction of how it turned out, like, kind of dark, but, again, PG-13 dark. Yeah. No, it really owns its darkness. And it, uh, yeah, no, it's not afraid. <laughs> Thank God, too. Yeah, it was just nice, it was refreshing to see that they were willing to go that far. I don't know if it's because it's the Netflix... Yeah. Uh, medium that they're going with, and they can do that. But I mean, you wouldn't see a Marvel movie rated R fucking no. ever because that well, might limit until their next sales. Year, right? Whenever Deadpool comes out. Oh, fair enough. Uh, well, but that is a, a niche um, group of of. Yes. they've definitely got a target for that. Uh, but yeah, like it is interesting. Netflix originals tend to uh, the demo. They know their demographic. It's like college aged um, adults to yeah, you know, adults with children. Also, last thing I'm going to probably say, unless somebody else says something, Kilgrave is one of the most interesting villains. Uh, and that's... Well, he has to be the... that has He has to be the most interesting Marvel villain that I've seen. Like, I mean, Kingpin this... was super cool. I liked Kingpin yeah. because I really he liked, was a human. I really he liked Vincent D'Onofrio's take on Kingpin, how oh. he was very fallible because he wasn't yeah. right in the head. But uh, with Kilgrave... He's not a super villain, even though he's a super villain. All yeah. of, all of his goals are very like, I want this thing. It's not like I want to change this city or rule the world or have like a trillion. No, dollars. and I, just, I, I, I thought that was that. cool. I mean, it was refreshing. It's just like it's a guy who has this ability. He's using it for terrible things to get whatever he wants. Yeah, that it's it makes all more the sense to me. We're friends on Facebook who paste or post those uh, political memes. If yeah. they had that power, that's who they we would be. be in trouble. Yeah, yeah, that's it's, who they would turn into. It's just very interesting because, like, out of the the villains that we've seen already, he has the power most likely to get him infinite power. Yeah, yeah, and he's the one who's just like, I'm good. I, I've got like these four things I want, and I'm gonna go get them, right. and then I'm done. Not right. like, well, I'm gonna take on the Avengers, and then I'm gonna yeah. take over the, the. I'm gonna get the Chaos Emeralds, <laughs> and I'm gonna win the game. 
See, yeah, every <laughs> it's a Sonic reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah, not I just it. being stupid. I, I, that's just, but that's, I mean, how most of these movies are. I mean, it's like I have to get the object of the power, and then there's eight people in wacky Halloween costumes that are going to try and stop me, <laughs> and I'll build a suit. Blah. Yes, I don't know. I'm just glad to be away from that briefly. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, and and because because the Marvel Universe has a a pretty great uh, a lot of really great story opportunities. Uh, Any time that they branch away from the uh, the the big bad getting the what's it called the MacGuffin, yeah, it's the the better. Which is why uh, you know we're going to talk about this later in trailer talk. But the the Captain America Civil War spoiler, you can tell that. Getting away from the big bad, getting the MacGuffin, is like what the Marvel Universe needs to be doing. Yes, yeah. it totally is. I mean, that that's just what needs to be happening. They've done it like 12 times. Time to stop. Move on to something else. Yeah. It's kind of the, the thing that keeps killing the comics. Yeah, exactly. How do we how do we top that? Well, I guess the bad guy's going to come back stronger? <laughs> yeah, yeah. and what's supposed to make us invest in this when it's the same story? It's, there's a bad guy. This time he's real bad. Yes. And uh, he wants to destroy the, the end, world twice, and then at the end he dies. <laughs> you know, like that's loop. It's a loop, or more likely gets locked away, yeah, never to be seen again. Oh yeah, until yeah, yeah. Next week, you're right. Yeah. Have you guys seen? It's a DC animated series or animated film. Do you ever watch those? I have not. I can uh, answer that before you say the movie. I tend to avoid DC as often as I can. There's a f- animated film out there. It's called uh, Flashpoint Paradox. Okay. Have you heard of it or no. seen it? Nope. It's you know the Flash. He can run super fast, and he can run so fast he can travel in time. You know that? Okay. Sure. Okay. So he goes back in time to save his mom from dying because that's one of the big story arcs of his life. He, that sounds like a great idea that will never go wrong. Yeah. So when he does that, <laughs> it alters the timeline that leads up to him becoming the Flash, and it changes the entire DC universe, not I just his we, story. Do we do you remember this uh, with uh, James James Ackerman, on- Professor James? Ackerman yeah. This was a long time ago we, he, I think uh, we discussed that and i watched it and he's right it's one of the best things i've ever seen like um it changes so many things like bruce wayne is now the one that dies in the alley and his parents survive and his dad becomes this murderous batman who just you know how batman has a code he but won't he's kill still anybody, batman but he's still batman hmm. he'll Weird. kill he'll kill villains and his mom she goes insane because her son dies and she becomes the joker Oh, that's okay. That's where that's from. Okay. And uh, Superman doesn't crash in Kansas City, or I mean, in Kansas, he crashes like outside of a military base. Wait, but so, how is that changed by the Flash not being the Flash? Shh, don't don't. Shh, yeah. Don't worry about it. Just yeah. Don't, don't worry about don't it. Don't worry about it. Stop. You, stop. stop. Asking. Turn that logic thing off. And, and why are people things. out running Jessica Jones? <laughs> so I think it was more the fact that uh, uh, the military got to uh, Kal-El, or yeah, Kal-El's, uh capsule before. The the Kins did. <clears throat> that doesn't actually answer the question. Yeah. Stop God it. Stop damn. it. I'm so gonna the military takes Superman and they put him in this isolated bunker underneath the ground. Yeah. So he never gets the powers from our son. So he's this shriveled up old man that's withering away in this basement. Why didn't they just kill his ass? Because they were studying him. Rude. Because he's an alien. You're an so alien. Way to totally end- miss the point. Yeah. And then... uh. Aquaman has an affair with Wonder Woman, and then they uh, destroy Europe. Like they just have this huge war. So you have all God these damn Flash. Yeah. Stop it. So then it's the entire DC universe fighting each other, except it's the DC heroes fighting each other. And that's kind of what you were talking about. How yeah. you can't just have new villains. You need to change it up. And that was a really interesting way. Where instead of having new villains that the DC was going to face, they yeah. were going to fight each other. I want to. <clears throat> write an open letter to new writers and current writers, especially in comic books right now. There are worse things that can happen to the main characters of any story than dying. And that doesn't mean torture or dismemberment. It means that it could be worse for them to fail a test in math than to die. Like, stories can be... Wrong re- priorities. Fair enough, but stories can be much more interesting if death is not constantly the struggle. I, uh, I agree, but you're, what you're asking of them to do is for superheroes to be actually characterized. 
which is rare. It happens. No, but the interesting thing about Je- Jessica Jones, yes, interesting Ooh. thing about De- Jessica Jones and Daredevil, like you said, was that the superpowers are secondary. The first mm-hmm. thing in both of those things is like the character struggle. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's make real characters and let's write a story, and we'll work the rest in. Yeah, yeah. that should be how this is done. That's it's why- actually. Uh, sorry. No, um, you're right. That's why um, I I don't know if you loved Avengers that much. And Avengers definitely falls to the big bad with the MacGuffin. But the yeah, thing- no, I did. I enjoyed both of them. You I can't mean, have the were- first Avengers film where they fight each other. The thing- well, they kind of did. The thing the about Avengers was that there were scenes where they were fighting each other, but you actually cared about the fights. Yeah, you were invested yeah. because they spent time on the characters. Yeah, like it, it really yeah, does. They gave work- them each their own movie before. <laughs> it, uh, you didn't even have to. It just it works wonders if everyone has a motivation and you actually give a fuck about what they care about. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know how they haven't figured that out yet. Because they don't care. I mean, you're making just all of the money every time. <laughs> yeah. That's why my favorite superhero is Spawn. Because he tries not to use his powers. Because if he, he's given a limited amount of powers. And if he uses them all, he dies. He goes back to hell. So, that and the entire really... comic book series is him trying to hold on to his humanity and not turn into a demon. That is an interesting balancing act. Yeah. Love Spawn. We so, should probably move on. We should, but I don't know. That was a, I, I'm going to say it right now. That was an amazing discussion. Oh, cool! I like that a lot. Not to toot our own horns. Not to toot our own horn, but I'll I'm toot sure your all horn these if listener, you toot mine. All these listeners out here, they're like, "Oh God!" That Does discussion. anyone want to hear Andrew try to describe like just the plot to something while Jareth tries to pick holes in it? <laughs> I just wasn't like, picking holes. I was pointing out the canyons. Just, just. <laughs> it's like, watch out, dead ahead. <laughs> you will fall. Hold on. Just someone take a DVD off the off of Andrew's shelf and read the back of it to Jareth and just see how it turns out. I just this is a, I'm really want this to happen. Um, Grab one at random, everybody. Oh, well, it's Pan's Labyrinth. Um, Great movie. Uh, yeah, this is a fantastic movie. I do like that movie. From acclaimed director Guillermo del Toro comes one of the most exciting and visually impressive adult audience fables since the Lord of the Rings movies. Just stop me as soon as you have. <laughs> Following a bloody bloody civil war. Young Ophelia enters a world of unimaginable cruelty when she moves in with her new stepfather, a tyrannical military officer. Armed with only her imagination, Ophelia discovers a mysterious labyrinth and meets a fawn who sets her on a path to saving herself and her ailing mother. Soon, the line between fantasy and reality begins to blur, and before Ophelia can turn back, she finds herself at the center of the ferocious battle between good and evil. You're really 100% okay with that? The Did you find the battle ferocious? Is that the right No, it descriptor? definitely was not ferocious. And as far as you can really tell in the movie, it's not really about good and evil. It doesn't really seem... Like, the, the father's bad, but... <laughs> like, he's clearly just a bad dude. But... I don't know. It, it never really came down to, like, good and evil. <laughs> this turned out about how I thought it would. So I'm, <laughs> I'm very glad we went that ahead with crime, this. So I mean, yeah. All right. Stay tuned for our offshoot podcast, Jareth Ruins Things. <laughs> and he's the king of the doldrums. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. So let's move on now to the top 10 news. See what holes Jareth can poke in this. So Not much. Most of these I don't know or care about. So Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling's a- not a real person. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's an android created by the Chinese government. To he is far too <laughs> handsome to be a real human being. So Ryan Gosling will play Neil Armstrong in a bi- biopic. Bio. Whiplash director Damien Chazelle. Whiplash, one of my favorite movies of all time. It's number nine for those of you who watched my top 100 movies of all time. It's number nine. They just made wow. Neil Armstrong very handsome. Yeah. A what lot more, more handsome than he really yeah, is. Yeah, he, he wasn't. They should get like Kevin Bacon to play Neil it's Armstrong. Okay. Yeah. Gonna, they'll give Ryan Gosling a mustache and a comb over and he'll, yeah. look, he'll look Hollywood ugly. Yeah. Hollywood ugly. Hollywood ugly. I like that. So like the Where, wrong, the wrong half of Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Jared's like my territory. <laughs> so they, yeah, he did his win. I don't know how to describe that. The wink and finger guns. The, man. the wink and finger. Yep. So I'm all about this. <laughs> Whiplash, like I said, one of my favorite movies of last year. Damien Chazelle proved that he's an incredible director, and this is an interesting story. I want to know: is it going to be like? Lincoln, where it focuses on one aspect of his life, or is I it going to be so. an entire biopic? I hope it's a narrow focus. 
an Pretty arrow much. focus. Yeah. I think we've expressed that, that that's usually what we hope. In yeah, because opinion. like yeah. the Steve Jobs movie, I don't know if you guys have seen that yet. Huh. Still have not. It's, it's not his entire life. It's three press conferences yeah. when he launches three different computers. Yeah. And then, of course, Lincoln is just one aspect of his life. That's what they need to do with this movie. And I'm pretty sure I can trust Damien. What to... would be a monumental thing that Neil Armstrong did, though? Like, what would be something you could make? He invented oh, yeah. post-its. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I want to see him just destroy people in Pog. That's what <laughs> yeah. I want this movie to be about. It's, it's like a, a Pog tournament. He though. has he has a a spaceship slammer that he just <laughs> smashes down on. Well, I for one have a lot more hopes for this movie than I did for Buzz Aldrin's cameo in Transformers 14. So wow. I think this is going to go. Buzz was in a Transformers movie. They wheeled him out. God I don't know. Damn it! <laughs> I was asleep and I woke. Oh my god! Did you ever watch the uh, video on YouTube of Buzz Aldrin punching the guy in the face? No, but I'm sure it was better than someone wheeling him out like in the middle of nowhere. Look, here's Buzz Aldrin to help. Yeah. I don't. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't. So in the YouTube clip, uh, this guy, one of the uh, the moon landings fake people, he was like in Buzz Aldrin's face with the cameras, like. Why don't you tell everybody in the world that you're a fake and that you're a liar? And why are you telling people that you went to the moon? You never did. And Buzz Aldrin was like 90 years old. And he's like, get out of my face or I'm going to punch you. He's like, I'm not going to get out of your face because the world needs to know. And he just punches him right in the nose. He did tell him. Yeah. It was the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Wow. So, yes. Neil Armstrong. I'm going to go see this movie. It's probably going to be really good. So the stars of the show Bones have filed a lawsuit against Fox oh for lost God. profits. Good luck with that. Yeah. yeah that's not going to happen. No one that's on Bones is a star. <laughs> that is so true. Bones is the lowest form <laughs> of, tele- of, of serialized television <laughs> that exists. I believe that. <laughs> Those long pauses let you know that he's being 100% truthful. Yeah, I was searching for my words. Yeah, he had to get just the right impact. Oh, I get so angry about Bones. <laughs> also, no, you just you don't take on Fox. You sign on with Fox, and you know what you're getting. Yeah. You're getting yeah, shit yeah. on. Everybody, every time. Everybody who's like, whoa, Fox did this and that. You, well, you shouldn't have put your show on Fox. You shouldn't have signed up with Fox. No. You run that risk. And also, how well, are you Fox not was just shortchanging their profits for the show? Oh. Uh, yeah. Were they like, you don't deserve this because you're fucking bones? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you they should... say that it's most likely it's going to cancel the 12th season. So. Darn. 12 yeah. season? Who? Well, do you guys, let me just ask you a question right now. Does anyone here Never watch... seen a single episode of Bones. Does anyone know anyone that's seen a single episode of Bones? I've every every woman episodes. that's over 30 has seen I've, Bones. I've <laughs> never, I've never seen an episode of Bones and I don't know anyone that has. And I know that was sexist I for me to say. I just said I watched, I've watched Bones. I know, no, you don't watch Bones. Though. I have seen, I have watched past tense. You've been in the same <laughs> like room. I've, with my eyes looked upon it. <clears throat> whilst, whilst it was, was playing, playing yes you have gazed upon bones <laughs> <laughs> oh i love gazing at bones i <laughs> i just uh all i all i know is that uh zooey deschanel's sister is in it and the un- um, the less hot one and the guy who played angel mm-hmm. that's it that's that's David why Boreanis? i was honest yep. yeah <laughs> That's, uh, a, that's, that's a, the reason I watched the first episode. I was like, all right, I'm in. I liked Angel. Yeah, I mean, that's a hunky piece of man meat right there. Emily Deschanel, that's her name. That's right. Yeah. All those seasons of Bones. Bones, <laughs> like, Bones, <laughs> NCIS, there's another one. People watch that. Yeah. No, oh NCIS, is, doesn't they have uh, David Cur- David Caruso in it? Yes. It also has David Boreon. <laughs> yeah! No, that needs to be a soundbite for a podcast. Um, it does. Actually, yeah, it does. that's that's um, from CSI. The oh, is it C- oh, CSI? Oh, CSI. What's the difference, Jareth? <laughs> Every NCIS is drama. worse. <laughs> is it CSI is really bad? NCIS is worse. <laughs> like I tried watching NCIS <laughs> once because nothing else was on. Look how Adam and he is right now. <laughs> Every single character in that show is this huge caricature that's clearly designed to broaden their target right. audience. Right, and it's all those, like, uh, every episode's just 
in and of itself, you know, there's a crime, da, 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 there's some danger, we solved it. Next and episode. What's worse <laughs> is, like, there's, there's the same thing. What's worse is that NCIS, they have, like, a wide jurisdiction. Like, they can go all over the damn place, and they're still, like, NCIS over there, NCIS yeah, over yeah. here. NCIS Omaha. Yeah. Are you guys There's not ready? even an ocean there. I'm still Is waiting for NC- NCIS Cleveland. Yeah. <laughs> here's here's our next news item. Next uh fall, uh every major shit network is debuting NCIS Bones Miami colon special victims unit <laughs> and everyone's going to watch it. Yeah. And it'll uh, I'm about to literally combust just it's talking going to, about it's this. Going to, All right, let's be... move on so Brian doesn't die. It's it's probably important that we do, although this is a yeah, let's move on. What were you saying? I, I was going to say that it, there's going to be like a uh, uh, cross promotion and and all the characters from show um, up in the other one. Uh, oh, what what is it? Lie to me and blacklist. Dude, and, lie to me um, was amazing. <laughs> I loved lie um, to me. Oh, uh, what's the other one? Uh, burn no- burn notice. Burn, burn notice. notice. There's <laughs> another one. Yep. Dude, oh I watched God. Burn Notice I watched mainly for the fact that um, Bruce Campbell was Bruce in it. Campbell was in yeah. it. Yeah. I watched one episode of Burn Notice in a hotel room once, and then I puked. It is. <laughs> can, I, can I just say that Lie to Me is the one about the guy who's like, I can tell when you're lying because I've got super facial. eyes, right? Yeah. Super um, eyes. He d- is that's not, he can read micro expressions. That's like, inadmissible in court. It is very inadmissible. So anybody in that show who's like, I know he's lying, they could just stick to their guns and be like, yeah, no, I'm not lying. I was, I was clearly flying yeah. when this crime was committed. Yeah, find some evidence, Tim Roth. <laughs> Jared with his prod pokes another hole in a show. I did not we need a sound effect for that. I pointed it out. <laughs> it's true. That Number was three. It was there to begin with. Peter Jackson has teased that he will possibly direct an upcoming episode of Doctor Who and Bones. <laughs> yeah. So on his Facebook page, he was making this video with his daughter. Where he was polishing his Oscars. Yeah. Not even joking. That's really what he was I doing. I actually watched those either. And that then uh, Peter really Capaldi douchey. walked into the room and he's like, oh, hi, I'm Peter Capaldi. I'm Doctor Who. And I, I actually do like Capaldi as a Doctor Who. Not the best, but he's he's pretty good. I don't know. Do you guys like Peter Capaldi? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't watched him. Okay. I like him as a dude. As a dude? Yeah. He's cool. Mike, Mike and, and Peter Capaldi have hung out. Yeah. And they he's go pretty chill. Walk. Yeah. What's this chill to pool ratio? Like a five to five? Uh like five five three. Oh, it's like it's, 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 like, it's like yeah, it's like yeah, it's like good. Why don't we say hang in? Hang when out. You say hang out. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What would Should I not ask shit? legitimate questions? What would hanging in? <laughs> How is that a legitimate <laughs> question? <laughs> 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 That's not legitimate. That's just like. Uh, okay, I, I'm actually starting to agree with Jareth. I'm thinking about this right now. <laughs> and, like, if you're going to go, like, say Andrew and I are going to go to a movie that's hanging out. Yeah. Say I work all here that's hanging in, right? See? Yeah. Yeah. There's a certain amount of sense to it. You can see the whole uh, explanation on the next episode of Bones. <laughs> colon, hang in, hang, don't, slash, back. Don't do that to people. Some of our listeners might actually be interested. And hopefully none of them are stupid enough to go watch those shows. No, to I try Andrew! To answer. <laughs> Andrew, pull the lever! Get this thing back on the rails! Peter Jackson and King Kong. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for this, is that Peter Capaldi gets taken to Skull Island and he has to fight King Kong. Oh, God. Yeah. Of course. Um, Do you think that if he does, it's going to be like the most grandiose episode of the Do- Doctor Who there's ever been? Or do you think it's going to ma- be made for the exact same amount of money? I hope it's made for the exact same amount of money. Yeah. It seemed like kind of just, because uh, I, cause I saw it, it just seemed kind of like this, a tiny uh, little teaser for people who are fans of Peter Jackson. Um, it's probably just gonna be like he's directing an episode. It probably won't look that different. You know? What's he? What's Peter Jackson doing? He's rolling Pol- in it right now, polishing his Oscars. Apparently, yeah. polishing his Oscars and rolling in the dough from all the people stupid enough to pay to see all the Hobbit movies. Yeah. Um, oh my fuck! Quick, God. quick uh, uh, side note: If you know, I mean, if you're wise to the internet at all, you've probably seen the the videos about Peter Jackson talking about how much he fucked up on the Hobbit. No, um, I have not. I'm not going to describe them. I just invite you to check them out. They're very good. He acknowledges it. Does he? Is he say he's fucking sorry? No, no, no. No, no, no. No, he just says that he fucked up. He says (laughs) that, effectively, he says that they were not at all prepared. It was rushed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 
Yeah. Was it a very political answer for saying, I'm sorry, I messed up? It was on the DVD extras of the most recent Hobbit movie. They um, were rushed. They made like five of them. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That seems like taking your time. Yeah. I think that was actually, the fact that they split them up was because they needed more time, but the studio wanted a movie released at this time, so they probably, you know... Put stretched out, you know, a lot of things would have been deleted, but the movie came out, and, and then they added like you know all kinds of shit, like a war that wasn't in. in what what I will say, Battle of Five Armies technically was in the books, but Bilbo was knocked out for the entire thing. What I will say is that they were uh, a thing that happens in the in the, the the video is that they are doing a battle. They are having like a huge battle, but they don't know the choreography. They don't know any of the scripts surrounding the battle. They don't know what the battle's context is in any of the movies. They're just shooting extra scenes for a battle. Jesus fucking Christ. Yes. And That's amazing. That was like, and Peter Jackson was like, okay, I think we might need more time for this. <laughs> so, wow. yeah, it's it was actually very good to watch, but uh, it doesn't make him any more forgivable, but you know. Speaking of DVD extras, please tell me you guys have seen the DVD extras, and I don't know why you would have, for Armageddon. No. Negative. Oh, mm, it's no. the most beautiful thing you will ever hear in your life. Ben Affleck talking about that movie. He's like, one day I walked up to Michael Bay and I said, wouldn't it be quicker to train astronauts to be drillers than to train drillers to be astronauts? And Michael Bay told me, shut the fuck up and get in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> And they put that in the DVD extras. Excellent. They know their audience. Yeah. So, number four. A Rambo TV series is in development at Fox, and Sylvester Stallone is reprising his role as the iconic character. This is a bad idea. No, it's... I'm excited. I yeah. really am. Because um, the last... So are uh, they going to address the fact that he's like 70 now? Have you seen the last Rambo movie? Like, what was it called? Was it just Rambo? Just in all capital letters, I think. Over was, the Rambo. I really did like that movie. I thought it was actually really good. It was. Uh, it's never going to be. If it's on Fox, it's not going to be as gory as that movie because that's well, one of no. the goriest movies I've ever seen in my life. Do, yeah. w- does he blow up things with non-combustible objects? <laughs> he rips a dude's throat with out of his neck with his bare hands. You. He has bare hands? Like yes. the hands of a bear? <laughs> yes, just like Nick Cage did whenever he was in Wicker Man. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he roundhouse kick a bear in that or something like that? No, he, he was, was in a bear punched, suit he and he punched, punched an old lady. Uh, punched an advan- old lady. Yeah, he punched an old woman. I have to see this movie. Now. No, you really do. You, yeah. I, you <laughs> should watch Wicker Man. Is that a shark you will or laugh your ass off. Yeah. Uh, I saw like the original Wicker Man. No, no, that's, that's actually pretty good. good. That's a good yeah. one. This is just this laughably is amazing. So, Pretty oh, f- is this going to run concurrently with uh, Ram Bones? Yes, Which Ram is, Bones. God, damn. whenever Bones gets canceled, Ram Bones is going to yeah, be uh, the uh, Ram Bones. Are we sure about that name? <laughs> hey, I don't um, make the rules, Jared. <laughs> as a side note, can someone please keep a counter on the amount of times that Bones gets mentioned in a punny fashion in this podcast? Somebody post that. If you're watching this on YouTube, somebody post that in the comments section below. I will buy you a t-shirt. It will be a lot of times. I'm going to start, like, like saying it from, like, really far away so it's hard for him to keep count. Rambones! <laughs> it's It's got a certain ring to it. Yeah. I'll watch the show. Hopefully it'll be good. Hopefully it's a lot better than the Minority Report show that they put on air. I'd probably yeah, try to wa- I'd watch Rambo. I actually I got You'd a- watch Rambo. I'd though? watch Rambones thinking it was something else and yeah. being really mad. Yeah. You thought it was a show about Rams bones? Like No, I thought like it was goat porno. bones. Oh. On Fox. Oh, like Ram Ramming Bones. bones. Uh, yeah. I got you now. I'm like, all right, I'm down. I got, I got an hour to kill. Your show was on HBO. Mine was on National Geographic. Oh, so um, two vastly different things. The first yeah. place to show pretty much hardcore pornography to children. <laughs> IFC National Channel. Geographic. Yeah, I think yeah. they're making that their slogan next year. Yeah, and then you grew up, and then you watched the IFC Channel, and then you got <laughs> HBO. Yeah. So um, Ryan Coogler, the guy who directed Creed has been approached to direct the Black Panther film for Is Marvel. Is that the movie about the band? No. <laughs> Actually, I will say this right now. I went and saw Creed this yeah, you, week. I read your... Uh, Best movie about? of the year. Wow. Really? Best movie of the year. Holy shit. It is with... I would not be surprised, and you guys are going to be 
I'm going to blow your fucking minds right now. I would not be surprised if Sylvester Stallone gets an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor. Wow. That would be crazy. It's his best performance of all time. Better than the first Rocky. Since Rambones? Yes, better than Rambones. <laughs> it's probably, from what I've seen, uh, there's a movie coming out called Spotlight. They, everybody says is going to win Best Picture. I haven't seen it yet. But of the movies I've seen so far this year, Creed is the best movie. Hands down the best movie I mean, I've seen. Because you've seen some amazing movies this year. I've seen a lot. I've seen, I think, 50 movies this year right now. Okay. That's, wow, that's quite an endorsement. Yeah. I'm going to have to check this movie out then. It, like, there were parts and the entire audience was crying because of what Sylvester Stallone was saying. It's so heartbreaking, that wow. movie. Second question on topic. Um, the Black Panther film, and this is not a joke, this is an actual question. Is it about the organization or the <laughs> superhero? This no, this is a Marvel's Black Panther. Okay. I was just double checking. If yep, you remember, honestly, I wasn't sure either. So I'm <laughs> glad you asked the question. Okay, so you know, um did you did you see Black Panther in the Captain America trailer? Yeah, I did. And I was okay. like, hey, I want to be like, ah, it's like a Black Panther. Yeah. That, this okay. costume actually looked really cool too. It does look really awesome. But um actually he's gonna be have his own film comes out in twenty eighteen. Was that after or before? Uh, Captain America comes out, I think, in March yeah, of next March, year. March of 2016. Oh. So it's two more years until we actually Which is really first. weird timing. Yeah. March for Captain America. Isn't that when all of uh, Captain America's movies come out like on this, in the uh, same month? I think one of them came out in January, which is really weird. Yeah. The Winter Soldier, I think, did come yeah, out. Yeah, probably Soldier. because the first one was such a pile of dog shit. Dude, that, that they... first Captain America movie was so bad. Yeah, I, uh, I think they thought this one wouldn't do as well. like the second one might not do as well and it did i it did. really that was one of the better marvel movies it was Winter solid Soldier. it was still like super formulaic and captain america was in it <laughs> so those were some detracting factors for me <laughs> yeah. no i i for for my part winter soldier is one of my favorite marvel but i mean movies. yeah i'd rather watch that than like bones <laughs> i didn't hate the, uh, the first captain america honestly Oh, really? I mean, it, it wasn't, like, super inspiring or anything. Brian, I didn't, seen... like, immediately go home and, like, nerd jerk off, but... <laughs> have you ever seen the movie jerk. Fruitvale Station? No, but I, I have wanted to. That the same like guy who directed app. that directed Creed. Okay. And he's going to be directing Black Panther now. And then uh, Michael B. Michael Jordan, B. Jordan. Was in both of those movies as yes. well. Hmm. He was also on Friday Night Lights. Fruitvale Station sounds like a mobile app that I would it does. microtransact to play. Hmm. Yeah. Can you can't do that? So though, it'd right? just be a phone app. Blackberry that you have. Every single phone <laughs> app now has microtransactions <laughs> attached to it. I absolutely despise everything about it. Yeah, I also don't like mobile gaming. <clears throat> Looking at you, rest of the world. I don't like mobile gaming either. So Ruth Handler, the creator of Barbie, is having a biopic developed about her, starring Reese Witherspoon. Because of course. I, I, I think I have a headache from how hard I just rolled my eyes. Something tells me this may be a dark horse, like, amazing movie. Like, the actual story of... I know this sounds crazy, but the actual story of, like, how Barbie came to be the most iconic toy in history. Yeah, what if it's actually kind of a venomous portrayal? Yeah. That could be cool. What if this is actually one of those movies where... Because I guarantee you, it's not going to be a happy-go-lucky Barbie movie. We're this not, is going to be not. a serious corporate... That's Dark. true. That's true. I, that's what I think this film is going to be. They're not marketing this to Barbie's demographic. That's for sure. Does well, Barbie have one anymore? I don't think you. Oh yeah, Barbie's still a, one of the best shows. Yeah. To Barbie's demographic, exactly. Also, are bio? Are we in the biopic era right now? God, we are been in the biopic era. Well, because forever. once again, it's easier. All we're getting. Oh man, Brian, <laughs> <laughs> go on. Gonna have go a heart on. attack. Once again, it, all we're getting are sequels, remakes, uh, adapted stuff. Hey, our sequels and, and remakes are getting biopics. better. Yeah, yeah. We, we've left the era of where you can comfortably say without a doubt that every sequel and remake that's going to happen is going to be the biggest pile of horseshit. No, but it's still at like through. 80%. <laughs> well, yeah, no. There's still a ton of them. We're just yeah. getting better at it. They're becoming more self-aware. Speaking of remakes... <laughs> Aaron Guzikowski, the screenwriter for Prisoners, has landed the job of rebooting Friday the 13th. Yeah, that's what we need. Yeah. Well, Actually, Prisoners was my favorite movie oh, of 2012. It was, it was so good. Yeah. That's an awesome movie. However, so, I don't care about Friday the 13th. Yeah, I don't either. I mean, it's... Um, Out of all like the old 80s horror films, yeah, I care the least about Friday the 13th. I care about it, but that's only because I hate it. <laughs> there's, uh, I mean, there's kind of been some recent hoopla on the video game... 
world because um, Adam Sessler is kind of the the I guess like the mouthpiece of of this Kickstarter that came out that's making a Friday the Thirteenth game, which is this asymmetrical. Um, you know, one person plays Jason and like thirteen other people play. Oh, that sounds the, awesome. The counselors or the, the the kids. Yeah. Um, young adults. <laughs> whatever. It's not kids. And it's gonna be done with like the Oculus Rift. Um, so, I'm excited. Yeah. So like that that sounds like of the things you could do with Friday the Thirteenth, that sounds very compelling. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. Probably because probably like the movie's just gonna be like. The same, but like probably gorier and with more tits. Yeah, you can't really get more tits in Friday the Thirteenth. I, I oh, you challenge accepted. Not, not without bumping up its uh, its rating. But here's something that we can take away from that: Can we all just endeavor to say hoopla more? Mm. Mm-hmm. Just in our I personal lives. Do. I agree. It's a good word. Unjustly not used enough. <laughs> you do that at home too, listeners, or wherever you happen to be. Traveling the world, say hoopla. Mm-hmm. Hoopla. Going to the bathroom, say hoopla. <laughs> hoopla. Driving, hoopla. 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 Yeah, that's the if you're in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, that's where you get what you go with. You go to a deli, get some soupla. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta stop. <laughs> so, Lions, this is the best news segment or ne- news item we've read all day. Yes. Lionsgate has apologized for casting a bunch of white people in Gods of Egypt. Did they then recast it? No. Or they just nope. Yeah. They said, this is something we should have noticed before we started. Oh, you not? not ne- yeah, yeah, that. Uh, I don't even want to hear that. You knew that already. This is one of those, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. Uh, Let me see if I can scenarios. find the actual quote. Just. Talk about this amongst yourselves. I would imagine the quote will be like, we at Lionsgate... It's very PC, like, very, like, too... We're very sorry that this oversight has occurred. We have all these crackers up. It's just that we like white people better. (laughs) Or, more likely, we're so colorblind we didn't notice they were white. Oh. No, they definitely didn't say that. Everyone's colorblind people can see white. I know. I have all the blindness. It's um, one of the few colors I have zero problem with. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, that's... Okay, Alex Proyas, the guy who's directing this, he also did Dark City and iRobot. Remember we were talking about him? Yeah. He had a quote as well. His is, the process of casting movie casting a movie has many complicated variables, but it is clear that our casting choices should have been more diverse. I sincerely apologize to those who are offended by the decisions we have made. Here's lo- what Lionsgate says. There's- we apologize that it is our res- or we apologize that it is our responsibility to help ensure that casting decisions reflect the diversity and culture of time periods portrayed. In this instance, we fail to live up to our own standards of sensitivity and diversity, for which we sincerely apologize. Lionsgate is deeply committed to making films that reflect the diversity of our audiences. We have can and will continue to do better. So clearly, shit. This makes clearly. me think of like. Like a guy who like just set a car on fire, and the police are have have caught him, and he's like, he just shrugs. He's just like, guys, I'm sorry. I know I shouldn't. You know, we'll do better. Next I don't time. set cars on fire. You know, it's not something that's good to do. And I'm sorry. It's like <laughs> that's this is not an accept. Like apology is not doesn't matter. You it's know? just so weird because then they'll release it and it'll still exactly. exist. Exactly. I mean, like, they'll still make money. Perhaps it would be more effective of them. And this is, of course, just judging by the trailer. For them to just apologize for the movie. In general, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the further Lionsgate would like to apologize for the travesty that will be hitting theaters. Insert release date here. But please go see it. Yeah. You know what? They I would have appreciated it more if they just said, it was because we knew these actors were going to pull in Big bucks. That's yes. why we cast I would it respect them. that more. Yep. I would, too. I would, too. I would. I would have also rather seen a, a press release that just said, oops. <laughs> it Seriously. Said, we know it's shitty, but we're in the business of making money. Yeah. That's... Then they probably should have picked bigger name actors? Those are the biggest they could get. Gerard Butler's a A-lister, man. Gerard I know Butler's Nicholas Coster oh, Waldau man. isn't, but... Uh... He's the only one, isn't he? Well, he's like the biggest name in Game of Thrones besides Peter Dinklage. No, I meant Gerard Butler's the only A-lister. Everybody else is C-list. Also, Gerard Butler is not good at acting. (laughs) 
That's a problem. <laughs> yeah. Think. It's like, uh, in, in all reality, okay, let's all acknowledge Hollywood is built on a broken formula that keeps repeating itself. Um, in all actuality, it probably doesn't matter too much that Gerard Butler is in this. Like, you could no. have got a, a bunch of uh, black people to be in this movie and it would have been fine. Yeah. And, like, the uh, same amount of people would have gone to see it. I would yeah. prefer to see, like, but Idris Elba. But it still would have been incorrect. Well, yeah. Because Egyptians aren't black. Some of them. Some of them are, but not, like, widely. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, like, we're, we're swinging I'm the I'm with Jareth on this one. He can bring this one up, yeah. That, yeah, not all Egyptians uh, are black. Yeah, I'm, I'm, Who's playing the pyramids? <laughs> no, I'm, I just... Nobody, I Croatians. Even, I don't even want to bother. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so... Jason Priestley, the star of 90210, is directing a Phil Hartman biopic. Phil Hartman, of course, Canada's greatest former son. Jason Priestley, also Canadian. I don't former know. Former son? Phil Hartman kind of died. Like in the sky? No. S-O-N. A okay, son of Canada. What did he do? Phil Hartman? Yes. Uh... He was so, in Sergeant Bilko. He was on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, he's he's, he's most known for for Saturday Night Live. If you've seen most, Saturday and then his Night wife Live murdered him. Sketches in the um, see, I was expecting he did some voices on The Simpsons as well. Yeah, I was really expecting you to be like he invented something or no. he did some amazing great thing. No. Mm. I mean, I'm not trying to diminish his life at all. Did oh, his, I love that guy. Yeah, did his dead. wife murder him? Is that what? Yeah, happened? his wife yeah, murdered his him. His wife was kind of insane. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you've seen any uh, like Chris Farley sketches uh, of that era of SNL, he's pretty much the straight man. Did you ever see Sergeant Bilko no, with I've... Steve Martin? He was in that. Uh, oh wait, yeah, I have. Yeah, he was the evil uh, major. Th- he was major Thorn. I believe he was also in the Sinbad vehicle house guest. Yes, he was. Oh, Jingle Jingle All the Way. Jingle All the Way, the Arnold Schwarzenegger Christmas no, movie. He was the yeah, neighbor. Yeah, he was yeah. the neighbor. I've seen the shit out of that. That's one of my favorite <laughs> Christmas movies. It, I will I'd watch that. I will watch that anytime. I will leave year. and go watch that right now. I'll yeah. watch it nonstop 24/8. I'll add an extra day of the goddamn week. <laughs> Call it Jingle All the Way Day. <laughs> jingle All the Day. Jingle, jingle All the, the day. day. I love it. I love it. That's brilliant. Okay. <laughs> Oh my! <laughs> you killed Jareth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just, I, uh, he's I broken. I guess I'm just very surprised. Like we've got three biopics and one top ten. Well, we've thing. got eleven seasons of Bones. <laughs> so <laughs> well, now we don't. We're not going to have twelve because they made a stink. So Bones will pick. Mm-hmm. They've got some bio bones, bones to pick. So I I just feel like we're just. Throwing darts at a list of names. Yeah. Season three of Jessica Jones, I think, will actually just be called Bones Jones. Bones, Bones Jones. Jones. Jessica Bones? Jessica. <laughs> That's the porn version of it. Yeah. It's already pretty close. It's pretty just close. With no nudity. It's like a it's really have unsatisfying It's going to have three times yeah. as much side boob. Jareth yeah. is intrigued. Yeah. That'll be on the back of the DVD. So three times as much side boob. They this, just take one side boob and they like keep placing it on the same yeah. boob. <laughs> so it's like just, it just no matter what it yeah. The next and last news segment is one that we may talk about for a little bit. PSX is going. Are you still laughing about? <laughs> so just imagine like a full on view and it's just like a cross eyed boob because they're just they got a side boob. The armpit folds all the way around. <laughs> it's just like ah. <laughs> That's her Some sort of origami person. <laughs> that like she got her powers, but at what price? <laughs> <laughs> Jessica Side Boob Jones. So PSX PlayStation Expo or Experience, whichever you like to call it, is going on right now as we're recording this podcast. Yeah. So uh, so probably people are watching footage of Final Fantasy Seven. Yeah. Hopefully gameplay. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make some predictions. Obviously, none of us have watched. Any of it, because we're here right prediction, now. The world will end in 2016. Okay. On um, January but 3rd. But about the, the PlayStation Expo. That's from there. I watched it this morning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they so, tell you. Buy PlayStation Sony's now, aware of it. While there's time. <laughs> so, I want a pretty legit, like, this is most likely going to be announced, a Dark Horse something, and then something totally outlandish from okay. everybody. 
besides Brian? No, I want to participate. Okay. <laughs> well, um, man, I'm trying to think of a dark horse. Okay, I'll tell you what. Um, so Final Fantasy VII. They're definitely going to show shit for that. Wait, are you talking the PC port, or are you talking the remake? The remake. Okay. Wait, I, they've they've nailed down a remake? Yeah. That was at E3 at, last at year. At E3, they say they're I remaking watch it. E3. I watched E3. Yeah, but we talked about we it. We discussed that I on for, this very podcast, I believe. I forgot. That. <laughs> I might not have been here No, you were day. here. <laughs> no, um, not, for the, not for the E3 thing. This was before you guys, so, uh, on our podcast. But I thought that before... Like, the makers of it, Square Enix, was like, we're not going to do a remake of they, 7 until we've completely tapped out that's Final Fantasy. That's correct. <laughs> so everyone was pretty pants shitty whenever they saw the trailer for Final Fantasy 7, the remake. I wonder um, if that's going to be, like, the end, aside from the online version. No. Uh, uh, there will never anyway, be a Final Fantasy. We're for sure going like to see the story. Yeah. that, Except hopefully, that actual gameplay footage <laughs> yeah. and not uh, the, the, like, trailer... Uh, I think... So that's your Dark Horse? No, that's like, obviously. Right? You think that's... I don't obviously. think we'll see that. You don't think so? Mm-mm. I think, like, we'll, we gotta see something, you know? I think that they're... Or I'll let you finish yours, so go ahead. Okay, what was it? Um, that's your that's your thing that you said. So it's pr- probably gonna happen, a Dark Horse, and then totally outlandish. Okay. Um, yes, Final Fantasy VII is definitely going to happen. Um, personally, my Dark Horse is seeing more of... The Last Guardian stuff. Uh, I don't feel like it's uh, like because because they actually were like, yeah, it's gonna happen, yeah. and I'm just really skeptical. Well, so. E3, did you not see? Yeah, that was, that's how they opened the show. Is they showed like that gameplay footage of Last I Guardian. I know. So um, personally, I I think what would be nice is if they showed like more of that. Okay. The more the better, but I doubt it. Okay. Uh, and then I hope. This is in my heart of hearts. I hope that they do a Jack and Daxter. That would be amazing. That's want, pretty good. I want Jack and Daxter back. That's pretty good. That's me. Jared, Brian, you guys? My only thing that I have is I expect an announcement that uh, the official new song <laughs> for the Sony PlayStation will, in fact, be PlayStation by, by Eiffel, Eiffel 65. <laughs> P L A Y S T A T I O N. That's how it's spelled, actually. Also, yeah. it's an educational song. <laughs> um, Unfortunately, in America, it's probably pretty helpful. <laughs> yeah, I miss Eiffel sixty five. Me too. You just gotta move your body in blue. Mm-hmm. Man, I can't even tell you how many times I have that CD still somewhere. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, this is this is going to be the deep, dark, secret recesses of of my life as a as a high schooler hanging out in uh, Jareth's room, which was in the garage of the house he lived in at the time when, when we were 15. Uh, we regularly role-played a homebrew role-playing system to Eiffel 65 in the background. I still like iPhone 65. <laughs> Have they put out another CD since? I had Probably. no idea that when I made that joke, it would result in... <laughs> what have like, you done? This like level of extrapolation. <laughs> yeah. I feel like everyone's going to start crying soon. Because <laughs> we miss Eiffel 65. Come back! <laughs> um, do you have any actual predictions for the PlayStation experience, aside from it being... Because uh, you have a PlayStation 3, don't you? Four. You have a 4? Mm, you okay. got a 4? Yeah, man. When did you get a four? I thought you didn't have one. A few months ago, I bought it off some guy on Craigslist. Good job. You should get Fallout 4, man. I will if I ever have $60. <laughs> I do intend to. I was about to say, I could loan you ours. And then I was like, oh, I did go copy. Fuck. Oh, you digital? We yeah, can still... that's, that's my main hookup with buying yeah. things digitally. Uh, yeah, that, I don't like that either. Yeah, I haven't bought anything digitally. I yes, it, I did. I bought it digitally because then I I bought Peggle installed. 2 digitally. Mm. So you could play it immediately. <laughs> yeah, it was installed like at eleven o'clock. I didn't have to go wait in the like cold. And did you, you know, see the line play. or the video I posted mm-hmm. on Facebook I, of the I line? Sure did. Jesus, seven hundred people in line outside GameStop, and Can that's I- why I bought digitally. Oh, I bought Fallout Two for uh, oh, hey. PC. Yeah, because it was a dollar ninety nine. Um, great game. <laughs> yeah. Can I say that? Um, I don't know if all of you guys heard about this, but. 
Pornhub was releasing their um, oh data, the fallout yeah their data on traffic and their traffic dipped significantly on the day of release of Fallout Four. Yeah, it dipped significantly for like two weeks around Fallout Four. No, well, <laughs> now it's back. Uh, it's where it needs it's to be. Back, it's back and kicking just like normal. The best Pornhub data I've ever seen was for the Super Bowl two years ago. Oh, okay. whenever it was the Seattle Seahawks. Totally destroying the Denver Broncos. Yeah. Did you see, did you see this thing no. that they released? So, so from that Super Bowl, I think the Seahawks won by like 30 something points. It was points. like 44 to 8. Yeah, 44 to 8, something yeah. like that. It's something Jesus, crazy. That's an right. ass beating. Yeah. So from like from the Super Bowl start, there was no traffic on Pornhub in Denver. Jesus. And or in Colorado, and yeah, then yeah. like by the second quarter, it went back up to its normal <laughs> <laughs> user viewing. What's like what's hilarious about that is the fact that it literally means that they stopped watching the Super Bowl to, to go, go watch porn. Off. Like yeah, that's... like like anger jerk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna feel some of the something good in my master, life again. That was some of the hate. funniest things. So, Jared, what are your PSX predictions? Uh, well, I'm woefully underprepared to be legitimate. Okay. In predicting, you didn't have to add go outlandish. Go outlandish. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dick. No problem. <laughs> um, I'd like to see something about PlayStation VR. I'd like that to be more of a. Oh thing. man, yeah, that's one of mine. So yeah, um, so that's my le- legitimate. Maybe my dark horse. I don't know. I I don't really watch these sort of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I don't watch anything ever. I guess. Ever. Yeah. I don't have eyes. Uh, it's an issue. Which makes Jareth a weird fit for this particular podcast. <laughs> Do you have just something totally outlandish? I think that PlayStation's going to finally announce a real live Chocobo. <laughs> that they're going to just <laughs> <They've> inject, <bred. laughs> inject growth hormones into a chicken until it's big enough to ride. <laughs> they're going to breed a chicken and an ostrich. Whoa. A chostrich. <laughs> And I don't gonna... know if that's... I don't know. I don't know if that's likely. They're also going to breed <laughs> in some dragons so it can breathe fire. It's going to be the goddamn orange? Black Chocobo. Black Chocobo. No, he's the one that flies. It's the orange one. They have meteor. Of the Chocobos, mm-hmm. the black Chocobo is the one that Donald Trump is most afraid of. Yes. Yes, for sure. He's also afraid of all the other ones, though. They Besides the golden all... one. <laughs> well, that one he wants to keep. Yeah, that's why he's not afraid. Locked of him. away. Yeah. <laughs> in his vault but of gold. I don't think there's a white chocobo, so I don't think he's cool with chocobos. Yellow, blue, green, black, orange. gold, and orange. Chocobos make Donald Trump deeply uncomfortable, is yes. the point. I guarantee you there's somebody listening to this podcast right now, what the fuck's a chocobo? <laughs> <laughs> they need to reassess their life. Yeah. Go look it up. Um, so here are my three predictions. My most likely going to happen. We're going to get a price announcement for PlayStation VR. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to guess That'll it. be big. Okay, here's here's another question. Over or under $300? Under. I think it'll be $200. <sighs> Over. Yeah, I'm saying 350 Wow. Okay. Maybe um, more than that. Just they say it's, it's going to be just like a console release oh so oh, I, yeah I, so it's gonna be a lot i'm i'm saying it's so it's be, it could be as high own, as 500 easily then. it's going to be its own ps4 attached to your fucking face no it still has to plug into your playstation okay so so it's a peripheral it's now, a peripheral that's gonna have the same like, now consumer data has showed us in the past those do not sell well <laughs> so no, connect? how are don't. you doing connect do you know yeah. but, okay but that came with your xbox it did so the thing the thing is that like if the vr is going to work it has to be affordable and it's it's if they make it four hundred dollars, it's just not going to take off. Yeah, I'm you know? right there with you because it's not like it's the only one. You have Oculus, and then you have Xbox. Uh, what's theirs called? Xbox Ah Morpheus. No, like Morpheus. That. That was a, that Morpheus was, was PF. Morpheus P- was PlayStation PS4 Morpheus PS4. was um, what, which was a, such a better name than PlayStation VR. Yeah, but um. But yeah. us, us d- dumb consumers need to know what the box is. So, yeah. Um, that's my... It's probably going to happen. We're going to get a price yeah. for that. My dark horse is... You know how they, last year at PSX they announced Final Fantasy VII and then everybody found out it was just the port mm-hmm. from the PC to PlayStation? Yeah. My dark horse is that they're going to say, and that's available today. 
the Final Fantasy VII port? port. The okay. port, not the remake. Yeah. My dark horse, outlandish, crazy thing. They're going to announce a new Siphon Filter game. Wow. Uh, wow. Yeah. I can say for certain that it won't happen. You don't think it will? No. So, I, I just need to throw this out there. And you can edit this out because it makes me sound like a dick. Rough 40 minutes still works. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's fine. And we leave it in. I said we leave. Oh, we leave Jareth. Jareth proclaiming he is 40 minutes until work. <laughs> okay, so, yep, uh, those are mine. That's not even enough time to watch an episode my of Bones. Dream, my dream would be that yeah, they announce that they're remaking <laughs> Brave Fence and Musashi, but that oh never Oh my happen. god, there you Dude, go. Dude, that would be a fucking great thing. That's fucking, still one of my favorite games of all time. That was amazing. Yeah. Um, I loved Brave Fence and Musashi. <laughs> yeah, well, like, let's hang out at least till trailer talk, I'd say. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just letting... Okay, yeah. yeah. We yeah, can yeah. we can hurry this up. I'm not like I'm leaving now. We're already just... over an hour, so we can oh, yeah. rush through. So these. expedition is uh wise. Yeah, uh things. okay, so just we have a Patreon campaign. Go patreon.com forward slash flick freaks. Give us your dollars. Yes. Uh trailer talk. Uh so first we have Nicholas what's his or Jeff Nichols' new movie yes. Midnight Special starring Michael Shannon. Joel Edgerton and Adam Driver. It's about a kid who is born with superpowers and his dad tries to hide him from the government. Jeff Nichols gave us movies like Take Shelter and Mud, two amazing movies. Yeah. And, I, and if take, I've seen Take Shelter, incredible. So if that's any indication, I'm, I'm excited for this. This yeah. trailer looks fantastic. I, I will say that I could have done with less from the trailer. Yeah. If really? You, I, yeah. I do agree. Like, show me nothing. If you could have pulled, <laughs> like, uh, I like, think that's what I like so much about Take Shelter. It it yeah. pulled back a lot of yeah. of the spectacle, and um, I was if anything put me off in this trailer, it was the explosions, um, and like the the special effects. I'm more I'm more compelled by the human element here, by the the father and his son. Yeah, um, it looks actually really really epic. Yeah, like it looks like it goes pretty far reaching like the military gets called in or some shit yeah. and i'd rather be surprised by the fact that there was there there is spectacle in it than you know kind of almost have that spoiled up front however but, anytime there is it winds up in a trailer that's true yeah because remember trailers have to cater to the dumbest of us yeah 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 next movie up central intelligence starring dwayne johnson aaron paul and kevin hart this is a movie that does that Yes. <laughs> the whole movie. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, Internet. I know I just took a shot at a lot of you. So this movie's directed by uh, Ross and Thurber. He gave us Dodgeball and We're the Millers. Two actually uh, yeah. funny movies. I did yeah. like Dodgeball. So uh, this movie's about two high school friends who have changed over the years. One of them is now in the CIA, and he has to get his super smart friend to help save the world. And he clearly doesn't listen at all from yeah. the... Uh, from the trailer, and that's actually the part I thought was pretty funny. Yeah, that we just did never actually listened. seem kind of funny. So yeah, for, for as dumb as it looks, it did actually have its moments. It did. I laughed at a, a part in it. Yeah, in the trailer. So yep i uh, I won't see this movie until no. somebody tells me, dude, it's actually really funny. Yeah. And if they but actually, if, you know, if they call me, dude, I I don't know if I'll listen. <laughs> so I, dude, it's really funny. Be, actually, that's a pretty good movie. I what think, if they called you, bro? Uh which has more cred to you, bro or dude, when somebody calls you? Depends on the person yeah. and whether or not they have a right to call me dude and or bro. Dude and or bro. Okay. If they call me dude and or bro, then they've got my attention. What about dude bro? Dude Different bro. thing. Don't Is that like being dude knighted? <laughs> dude bro of Brian Vaughn. That's the, that's, the, that's the highest level of dude bro or of dude or bro you can achieve. All right, so the next movie up is I Saw the Light, the Hank Williams biopic starring Tom Hiddleston, Elizabeth Olsen, and Bradley Whitford. I thought that that, okay, yes, as a biopic, I didn't yes. know that. Marking. Going into it, but it seemed like one. So I was if like, I if I did a um, a poll of people who had just walked out of um, Thor: The Dark World or Avengers or something, and I was like, "Hey, uh, there's going to be a Hank Williams biopic. Uh, who do you think would play Hank Williams? Not Tom Hiddleston. Not Tom Hiddleston. Never. I'm not saying he's going to do a bad job. It's just that's a really outlandish casting choice. With a choice. million guesses, you would not guess Tom Hiddleston. Like, very very odd. Actually, honestly though, I wouldn't guess him very often in general. Yeah. Like I, I liked him as Loki, but like That's what I was gonna say. I don't really think like, about him. If you're gonna often. cast someone as Loki, I'd be like, well you're gonna fucking cast Tom Hiddleston then. Yeah. Yeah. 
You know, that's about it. Like, for now on. Yeah. But, but to be fair, it's, he's in a similar space as, like, Benedict Cumberbatch. He's in the, the the British alumni's of, like, Shakespearean theater. You don't really see that guy playing Hank Hank Williams. Williams. (laughs) Yeah. It's supposed to be, like, Jeff Bridges or, like, Josh Brolin or, you know. Yeah. Somebody with some someone who was cred. A, someone who was in a Coen Brothers film. Yeah, uh, but it does look pretty interesting. It's a new director. It's his second film. I think his first was a super indie that I don't think anybody saw. Yeah. So he's been given a lot of responsibility t- to make a Hank Williams biopic. Well, hopefully he pulls it off. Yeah, I probably won't go see it. The next film up, Captain America: Civil War. Holy shit. I that probably will, will looks, go see I it. I will see this. This in looks fan fucking tastic. Yeah. I will. Yeah. I, will I mean, it. I I want to see <laughs> two uh two super soldiers double team in Iron Man. That's my dream. So this is uh, directed by the Rousseau brothers who also did Winter Soldier. Yeah. So. Okay. For those of you who don't know what Civil War is about, pretty much quickly some quickly summing it up, Captain America and Iron Man are going to fight each other in this movie. Yes. So. And it will be for a pretty good, compelling reason. So. Yeah, the the uh, at the very end of this trailer, we see this part where Winter Soldier, Bucky, and Captain America are beating the living fuck out of Iron Man. Does anyone care about Bucky? Actually, yeah, because do, he's going to be the next Captain America. Uh, I think outside of that, I think I think people do care about him. No. I don't. I I really <laughs> liked Winter Soldier and his whole story arc. I thought that was really interesting. But um, that like uh, that very last scene where both of them are just beating living shit out of him, like just throwing the shield back and forth to each other. Like, this is going to be an awesome fight scene. Yes, I'm ready now to talk about Batman Five Superman Dawn of Justice. Oh, <laughs> just, Batman Five Superman colon Dawn of Justice. Just before that, real quick, <laughs> we have to talk about the fact that Black Panther was oh, in the Captain America yes. trailer, and he had a really cool outfit. That outfit was on point. Yes. It looks really good. We didn't see Spider Man in this trailer, but he is in this movie. I mean, oh, he, he didn't have yeah. a grill or anything, but yeah, <laughs> he should have. Okay, <laughs> but yeah, I'm very excited to see. Just, I wonder how much uh, Spider Man or Black Panther are in this movie because I know a lot. Yeah, do you think they just get quick cameos? Um, a little, well, know, it looks like they kick Black Panther's ass, and or Black Panther mm-hmm. kicks someone's ass there for a second. So yeah, yeah, I think it will be to the effect of Hawkeye's involvement in Thor, where he was there. Oh, that's Hawkeye, and then it's like, Bye. oh yeah. Except mm-hmm. only if they punched Hawkeye really hard when yeah. he showed up. Yeah. yeah, he's like, hey, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> they should kill him, and he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Hawkeye fans. Fuck you. We'll revive you in three... Or Teach you to Hawkeye. be a regular human being. Yeah. All right. Now for the final trailer. Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Batman 5 Superman <laughs> colon Dawn of Justice. So I guess what it should really be called is like Doomsday or the just... I guess it's the first Justice <laughs> Batman v so. Superman slash Frankenstein that slash... That guy from Adventureland oh. pits everyone against each other and turns into Frankenstein. <laughs> Adventureland is so good. Really? It's really gonna go it is okay. Record. I really liked that movie a lot. You it's give it a lot more cred than I do. I, just I thought do. it was okay. I like Adventureland. Really did not like it at all. I'm just over here liking Adventureland and like <laughs> telling you to shove good. your comic books up your ass. <laughs> all right, so at the Ryan end, Vaughn at the end of this name. trailer, we find out that Lex Luthor, who's played by Jesse Eisenberg, that's our Adventureland reference, he is going to take the corpse of Zod from Man of Steel and turn him into Doomsday, which Somehow. is the dumbest fucking thing yes. I've ever heard so in my life. Also, so stupid. that probably happens... When do you think that happens in the movie? The very end, I assume? One yeah. third, two thirds? Also, no, it's it's the back end of the movie. How is he going to change him into, into anything? Who's is is he going to inject him with something? Good luck getting through his skin. Yeah. Because even when they're dead, they're super-powered. Pretty sure that Superman I, won't even decay whenever... Super, I fucking hate Superman. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, God, just fucking Superman. I just realized that uh, I was thinking about it, and I was like, man, so um, Batman and Superman are fighting, and then a really big threat shows up, Can I- and Wonder Woman has a big shield, and she's there, blast. Man. And I was like, what was the plot of Avengers? Everyone's fighting, and then 
Captain America has a shield and he breaks up the fight and then there's a big <laughs> Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> Can I just say even Batman in power armor isn't going there's just no. Either he completely wins against Superman. Did you never read The Dark Knight Returns? Doesn't matter. <laughs> yes, it does, because when Batman put the power armor on, he kicks Superman's ass. There's none of their lore supports it. Either he completely wins because he gets all the kryptonite, because apparently all of that planet fell to Earth, or <laughs> he has none of it and he gets murdered. <laughs> yeah. There's two scenarios. All of their lore is like, if Superman punches an ant, he could break the core of the Earth with the body of the ant that he plummeted to the ground. Because ants are also indestructible. <laughs> Just What? What? The ant thing, I doubled back on it because I realized oh, that, like, okay. that okay. like, of course, the ant would just squish. Yeah. <laughs> now, my point is, is like, he could punch a planet out of alignment. Yeah. Yeah. So, he's beating on this guy in what I'm going to have to assume is the strongest metal he can find. Yeah. That force is still going to be in there somewhere, just jellifying his entire body. Yeah. Just fuck anything that's like, oh, we're going to fight Superman. Either you lose or you win. There's no in-between with Superman. Um, I'll say Wonder Woman looks dumb. I, will, I think she looks good. I really do. She looks like Wonder Woman. Then I'm glad you're here, Andrew. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you're here to be the one positive person on this group. Okay, first 80% of this trailer, I was so on board until I found out that Jesse Eisenberg turns into Frankenstein. I was almost, That's when I got pissed. I will say I was almost into this movie. Because I think that Ben Affleck is going to be the best Batman. I think his costume, yeah, hands yeah. down, hands down, that's the best Batman Wait, costume we've so ever seen in a movie. not George Clooney? No. Nipple suit, no. Second best. <laughs> but no, I do think that's the best costume we've ever seen for Batman. Yeah, I don't know why everyone hated on Affleck. That's, he'll be a good Batman. He'll be fun. It's just going to be a shitty movie. I don't know if it'll be shitty. It's not going to be the best superhero movie. It's no. going to be a good superhero movie. It's going to be a decent... Well... If it's decent, it's better than any DC movie so far that wasn't. Like, That's right. You guys really... didn't like Man of Steel, no. did you? Oh God, no! I did like Man of Steel. It ruined my day. <laughs> Made me want to go to IHOP. <laughs> yes. That's your number one thing. You always take Every away from time, Man of Steel. That it's IHOP like, was everywhere in that movie. It's the what a weird, weird product placement <laughs> thing to happen. IHOP. Superman eats at IHOP. What did IHOP have to pay for that? A <laughs> lot. They probably have lifetime pancakes. I mean, yeah. All right, so we got to move on so Jared can get to work soon. Um, we have a store. Go to shop.spreadshirt.com forward slash flickfreaks if you want t shirts, uh, coffee mugs, phone or tablet cases, all the good paraphernalia. We have it all there. And if you buy anything in the store all the way up until December 7th, you get 15% off if you use the promo code MARY15. That's M-E-R-R-Y-1-5. And if you order it before the 7th, it's guaranteed to show up at your house before the holidays. So, so good. for all those gifts of us, you need to send to people. Yes, yeah. exactly. We are the gift that keeps giving. <laughs> so now it's time for the Fairbairn forecast. To let you know what movies are in theaters right now. So, you can go and see in theaters Krampus, which is awesome. Yes. It's not as good as I wanted it to be, but it's still pretty good. You can see the letters Creed, which is the best movie of the year, The Hunger Games, Mockingjay Part 2, Woo. The Good Dinosaur, which was okay. You can see uh, The Night Before, Secret in Their Eyes, Victor Frankenstein, and The Martian. Anybody read the reviews of Victor Frankenstein? No. Apparently it's not as bad. As, it's bad, but it's not as bad as we thought it was going to be. Man. So it's not a complete train wreck that's been lit on fire by, like, Godzilla. Exactly. <laughs> I, just, I still feel like it is. And I'll never know because I will never watch it. I'm going to yeah. force you to watch it now. Which, I'll, damn it, no, because then I'd have to watch it too to make sure yeah, you Yeah, your plan it. has backfired. All right. Fuck it, it's worth it. <laughs> Do you have time for IMDb Idiots or can we skip it this month? Or week? I don't think I do. Okay, that's fine. Like, you I don't want, you, I don't want you to be late for work. Yes. So <laughs> We I, will thank everybody for listening to this episode of the Flick Free Podcast episode. 
the sextieth episode. The 60th. I was oh. not ready for it. Yeah, I'm won't. sorry. I, I put you on the spot. I'm sorry. You were looking at your phone. That's that's my bad. I was like, I was about to be like the three thirty six episode. Yeah. It's the sextieth episode. <laughs> so we will catch you guys in the next episode. If you would mind, follow us on. Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, Patreon, Instagram, all those great social media formats, all of those at forward slash Flick Freaks. Subscribe to us on YouTube. We're trying to reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We're about 1,000 away from accomplishing that goal. I think we can do it. That's about 40 subscribers a day. If you follow us, I'll follow you. Yeah. There Everywhere we go. you go. Except when he has to go to work. Obviously, subscribers. Well, yeah, I gotta, I gotta pay the bills. Gotta pay the bills. So we will catch you in the next episode. Until next time, thank you for listening, and Godspeed. Yo, hi. Bye. Bye. Bye.